Hello, my name is Michelle and you're watching From Surviving to Thriving. Today's video has to do with the final discard. How final is it? I recently posted on my community page asking what topics you guys were interested in hearing about and this was one of them, so let's get started. Why do we talk about the final discard as opposed to just the narcissistic discard? Well, that's a really good question because the truth of the matter is, is that the narcissists work on a cycle. And when you get to know them, it's kind of crazy because they're really pretty predictable people. For example, when they get into a relationship, it always starts and ends in the same way. It starts with the love bombing, the idealization phase, the devalue, the discard, hoover and repeat. So looking at that cycle, that cycle can go on for a very long time, years and in some people's cases, decades. So why eventually does that normal discard or normal in the context of narcissism, why does that become a final discard? Well, before we can understand how that happens, let's first talk about why the narcissist discards in the first place. I just want to mention a few main reasons, and of course it's not an all-inclusive list, but just a few main reasons why the narcissist discard in the first place. One reason is the victim may try to hold the narcissist accountable for something. Maybe they call the narcissist out for their behavior. The narcissist, instead of responding in a normal fashion and addressing that behavior, they do the unexpected and they completely drop off the face of the earth. That's one of the reasons why they discard. Another one could be that you establish and enforce a boundary. Maybe you said the word that the narcissist hates the most, the word no. And once again, instead of being flexible or compromising in some tiny way, they discard. Number three, maybe you acted in a way that the narcissist does not approve of. Maybe you're staying friends with somebody that they're trying to isolate you from. Or maybe you simply made the mistake of acting like an individual. The narcissist cannot take seeing the person that they're in a relationship with act as an individual because it makes them feel like they're losing control. And so to establish that control again, they will discard. Number four, it could be simply because the narcissist is bored and they blame you for tying them down to a monotonous and mundane, ordinary existence. And so to create drama to create emotion they will discard and number five maybe you threaten to leave them maybe you're getting tired of the abuse you start voicing the possibility of exiting the relationship and whether you're serious or not they view that as a competition and they want to race you to the discard so those are some of the main reasons why they discard in the first place and as you can already tell it's all about control because what the narcissist is doing when they discard you is they're conditioning you, they're training you to expect less and less and less from them. And for the most part, this tactic works. Let's say you um, stay friends with somebody that they're trying to isolate you from, right? And it resulted in a discard. That discard is so painful that what happens is you automatically, when the narcissist comes back, when they do the hoover and repeat, you automatically start thinking of doing anything that will avoid that pain again, including isolating yourself from that friend that they originally were trying to isolate you from. You begin doing that because you don't want to face the pain of them disappearing out of nowhere once again. So it's all a, a control tactic. It's all about uh, making you or, or conditioning you to expect less and less from them and to tolerate more and more abuse. So why does the narcissist change? Why do they change their normal discard, which leads to the hoovering and the repeating of the cycle all over again? And why, do they, why does it become the final discard? Well, the truth is the narcissist doesn't change. The narcissist would be very happy to continue in that cycle for as long as you tolerated it. The person that changes is you. Eventually, a person starts to catch on to what's going on. Eventually, and hopefully, hopefully a person starts noticing that, wait a second, I'm giving more and more, I'm tolerating more and more, I'm expecting less and less, 
what do I get out of this relationship? The mere absence of discard and they start, a person will start to analyze and realize that's not enough. It's not enough to avoid being hurt by being discarded. They actually want something reciprocal. They want love. They want what they're giving, they expect back. And that's normal and that's healthy. So that's what starts to change. The person begins to see the narcissist in a different light. Instead of viewing the narcissist as you know, a gift that fell out of heaven and amazingly fell into your arms, the person starts to realize that, that the narcissist is not giving back. The narcissist is, is only taking and what they're giving is painful. It's not even love. So you begin to notice the, the narcissist or you begin to see the narcissist differently. You see what's behind their mask. And at this point, some people might think, oh, they see what's behind the mask and they want out. Well, in some cases, yes, but not always. Most victims at this point that they begin to see the mask slipping or they realize that there is a mask and they realize that the, they know what's behind the mask, they're still, believe it or not, they're still not ready to walk away yet. Some or most because they're empaths, because maybe they're battling codependency. Some may begin to think, well, I, I've seen what they can be during the love bombing and idealization phase so maybe I can help what's behind the mask and maybe I can help him or her to get better. So the person is seeing the narcissist for who they are, but they're still not convinced that they need to leave because they've invested so much. They've given so much and they've seen what the person can be. Okay. So if that's the case, why does the narcissist do that final discard? Because the narcissist knows that you see through them, because the narcissist knows how you're viewing them now, they have to do that final discard because they need validation. Their validation that they need is that they are perfect. They are not flawed. They are amazing. They need you to always view them the way you viewed them during their idealization phase. When they were giving and love bombing you and you were reflecting back to them that they were perfect and amazing. They need that all the time, regardless of how they treat you. And so when you begin to not reflect that back and when you begin to see them for who they really are, you are putting up a mirror to them and instead of them seeing their perfect false image that is their only reality that they accept in their mind, they're seeing themselves as flawed. They're seeing themselves how you see them. And that creates such a narcissistic injury that they would prefer to have nothing to do with you, pretend that you never existed in their life, move on with their life as if you never existed, whether there are kids or not in the family, rather than face the fact that someone does see them as flawed, okay? They can't tolerate that. So that's what happens when it becomes a final discard. It's not that the narcissist has changed. It's that you've changed and you can no longer provide that validation for the narcissist. And they know that to, to reel you back in, once you really see who they truly are, once you are convinced that you're very well aware of, of who they are underneath the mask, underneath the, the facade of who they show the outside world, to them to reel you back in would take a tremendous amount of work because they'll, they know now that you're not going to be easily fooled with uh, superficial love bombing, with pretty words and, and, and superficial promises because now they know that you're going to evaluate their words and their actions to make sure they're on the same page, which means they would have to work so hard to fool you again. And they prefer, as opportunists, they prefer to start a relationship with somebody where they're already at the top. And yet, just because that becomes a final discard doesn't necessarily mean that they won't try to contact you in the future, maybe a year down the road, two years down the road. I've spoken to people that a narcissist contacted them after five years of not seeing each other they will always at some point 
if they're bored, maybe they're out of supply at that moment, maybe they just want to feel powerful and see how many people they can reach out to and how many people bite back and that that alone gives them their narcissistic supply. It doesn't necessarily mean they want to come back into your life, but they just want to see if you'll bite, if they send you a message or, or call you. If you respond, you have given them narcissistic supply and it might be just what they needed at that moment. Okay, so with that in mind, the real final discard does not come from the narcissist. It comes from you. It comes from the person that says, no more, this is it. But that's not an easy place to get to. It's a whole lot easier to say than to do. I know because I've been there. So I wanted to give you guys a few tips that helped me to strengthen myself before I was able to reach that point where I knew that line was going to be put down and there was no crossing it again. So this is what helped me. I know you guys said it. It's go no contact, which means it, it's not enough to not contact the narcissist. It's not enough to not reach out. You actually have to delete, block, and remove from all social media. If you don't remove them, that gives them narcissistic supply. Why? Because they say, wow, look at what I've done to him or her, and they leave me there. They're not fully over me. I could have them if, with a snap of a finger, or I could do whatever I want. That thought alone is giving them tremendous amount of power and narcissistic supply. But it's also torturing you, because by having them there, you're tempted to look. You're tempted to see what they're doing. You're tempted to, to wonder. Are they contacting me? Will they contact me? Um, are they thinking of me? You're tempted to keep those thoughts alive inside of you and that prevents you from moving on. So the, the best thing to do is to block, delete, and remove from all social media. Um, I know it's hard and it's, it's pretty drastic, but think about it. Anyone that has a serious addiction Cutting back never really helps, or if you cut back on an addiction, eventually you may overcome the, the addiction, but it takes a whole lot longer than going cold turkey. I remember as a, as a kid, as a teenager, when I was trying to quit smoking, by cutting down, it wasn't enough because it kept that, you know, that door open. Well, yeah, I'm only gonna have five today. Or did I have my five? No, but maybe six today. You know, instead of a pack, at least now I'm down this whatever. I went years trying to quit by cutting down. It wasn't until one day somebody gave me a whole carton of cigarettes and I looked at, looked at them and I thought, okay, how am I going to, how, over how long of a period is this going to take me at the rate I'm going to really quit? And instead I crushed that, that carton and I never smoked again. It was that final decision where I was showing myself this is my decision and this is what I'm doing about it that gave me the conviction to move forward. The second tip to help you to make sure that you are, are realizing that you're in charge of the final discard is by making a list of every painful thing they did to you, big or small. Make a list in as much detail as possible. Write it all out. The purpose of this is to continue to help you to break the addiction, okay? Because just like an addiction, if somebody is taking drugs and they get that high, right? They feel like garbage the next day. But when they're going through a difficult time and they're emotionally struggling, they don't think about the day they felt like garbage. They focus and remember the high that they got when they took the drugs. Well, that's the same thing with the relationship with the narcissist. When you're having a down day, you're not going to focus on the difficult times. You're going to remember the high that you got out of the relationship. So by making this list and keeping it with you, putting it in your wallet, putting it in your pocketbook, every time you're going through that down moment where you're tempted, you're missing this person, read that list, read it out loud because it's going to remind you of the reality that you had to endure in order to have those tiny moments of, of highs, okay? It's going to remind you that each high came with tremendous lows and it's going to keep you grounded in reality, which will help lessen the temptation to reach out. A very frustrating part of the narcissistic discard is the fact that it leaves you without closure. The narcissist will leave you 
from one day to the next. You know, the, the argument is just beginning and they just, they end it. So you have all of this inside of you, all of the things that you never got to say, never got to express, and it's like molten lava bubbling inside of you wanting to explode out. It's extremely difficult to feel like you can move forward if you cannot close the door and get some closure to what you went through in the past. So a really helpful tip is to write a letter to the person. Write a letter in as much detail, as articulate as you can, saying everything you wish you could say, everything you wanted to say, everything you held back, write it all out. But now remember, do not send this letter. Do not reach out to the narcissist again. This letter isn't really for the narcissist as much as it is for you. Because by allowing yourself to express what you really want to express, instead of taking those feelings and shoving them down inside of you, it helps you to process and release those emotions instead of having them fester inside of you. It is a very helpful technique. You can hold on to this letter as long as you need. Once again, anytime you feel the need to reach out, anytime you feel like you didn't have the closure you need, you can read it again. When you felt you've done it enough that you're bored, that you never want to read that letter again, burn it or shred it. Get rid of it. That tells your mind there's closure. It's done. It's over. You don't need to even express it anymore because you've done so so often with that letter that it's broken. The, the attachment is broken. Tip number four, self-examine your life and see if you are exercising self-care in your life. When you're in a relationship with a narcissist, caring for a narcissist or being in a relationship with a narcissist is a 24 seven hour job. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you don't get a break. Everything you do has to revolve around them so that what happens is little by little, that every person that's in a relationship with a narcissist begins putting themselves further and further down on their own list of priorities. So now's the time to examine your life and see how you're treating you. What are your eating habits? What are your sleeping habits? What are, are you exercising? Are you being kind to yourself? How are you treating yourself? Your thoughts? Are you constantly condemning yourself? Or are you, have you developed a compassionate dialogue? Evaluate how you're caring for you because if you're not caring for you well, if you're mistreating you, then you're going to wind up either back with the narcissist or in a relationship with someone else that is also going to mistreat you. So begin treating yourself with the love and respect that you deserve. Number five, reconnect with family and friends that you care about. When you've been with a, a narcissist, in a relationship with a narcissist, especially if you've been in, in a relationship with one for a long time, you have lost connection with people that you really care about. The narcissist will make sure of that. They isolate you from the people that mean the most to you. So now's the time to start reaching out to them. Don't be afraid and, and think, well, I cut them out of my life or they tried to help me and I turned on them when they were trying to help me because I was defending my relationship. So they're going to still be mad at me. No, don't think like that. It is difficult for family and friends to watch someone they care about be in an abusive relationship and choose to stay for a long time. So understand why some of them may have been upset in the past. But if you're out of the relationship and you've made steps to, to heal, they're positively going to be happy for you. And if you reach out, they will reach back. So don't let fear, uh, fear of rejection, stop you from reaching out to people that really truly love and care about you. And number six is to make sure you take time to get the help you need. Maybe you need a therapist, depending on, on your state of mind. That may be something you need to look into. Maybe you need a life coach. Maybe you need a good friend that's there for you that can talk um, to you about what's, what happened to you and can help you to make sense of it. Maybe you need a support group or uh, a Facebook group, some, someone on Facebook or, or Instagram any place where you can find support. Sometimes there's local areas where you're living. If you look up um, local support groups, maybe you'll find something that can be helpful. The point is, is the beginning stages of leaving a, a, a narcissist or being left, dealing with a discard, having your life shattered before you and all the pieces on the ground and you're, you're at that point where you're just beginning to put them back together, you may need some help and there's no shame in that. So reaching out 
to get help during the most difficult time you need will strengthen you to stay strong. So remember, the final discard, and this is something that the narcissist knows, they, don't, they will never admit it, but they know their discard only gives them a false sense of control. It's a false sense of control because it makes them feel that they have all the cards to play when the truth is, is that you also have control. You have control over you, over your life and over your happiness. And you are completely capable of enforcing a discard so that it becomes a final discard because it's what you choose because you no longer want to allow abuse in your life.